Hey y'all, Google Trends has finally received an update and it's pretty awesome. Let me show you how it works. So this Google Trends update is pretty awesome. If you haven't ever explored Google Trends, it's definitely something to take a peek at. It is showing us what's trending right now in Google search. And that is very telling about many different things in our culture and what's going on. And yes, you can see what is trending in other countries. So there's a lot of different ways to look at this data, to use this data, and even use this in your classrooms. Now, here is a little glitch that I ran into with my Google Workspace for Education account. I couldn't access trends. And even though I'm the domain administrator, I couldn't actually add it. It was nowhere to be found. And then after some research, realized that many others are experiencing this problem with their education accounts. So just FYI, if you're seeing that, it seems to be um, kind of a known glitch or problem that it, it's not actually um, there to add it to add access. So hopefully they're going to get that worked out because I do think this has great use in the classroom, but it's also just super cool to go check it out. So you can type in your search terms right here, your queries. So for instance, if I just wanted to look up AI, because I know that's a topic that's hot right now, I'm going to see interest over time. Now this is just over the last day. So I can come up here and change this and see how much this has changed over the last year. And yes, we definitely saw a big jump when ChatGPT came out. And even the interest by subregion across the US, and this one's pretty clear that everybody is interested in this. But um, this can also be very telling about different things that are happening regionally. Now, they also show you related topics and related queries, and this is important. Um, from what I read, topics is always going to give you better data. So these are predefined topics that Google has discovered and are going to include the various spellings and misspellings of that topic, whereas a query is strictly searching for your exact search terms. So that is really important to notice. Now, when I come over here to see related topics, the last time I looked at this, it actually had artificial intelligence in here as a separate topic. Um, there we go. Well, there's open AI as a separate topic, uh, AI intelligence as a separate topic, art, avatar computing. Um, let's just go back to this art topic here. And of course, we will see that the the trend itself, the interest over time is is very much like what we just looked at. But if we keep going, we can look even deeper into specific apps. We can go deeper into what we're searching for. So this is definitely a tool that is useful, not only for current events and culture, but also for students who may be doing research. And especially if you're researching something that is relatively new or changing, I think this is a really neat way to look at some data. And um, you can also go to trending now and just kind of see a list. So when I was exploring this, I'm like, hey, wait, what happened to hot trends? So if you've ever visited a Google campus, you may have seen on the, the screens everywhere this right here. And um, this is called Hot Trends. It does still exist, although it, I couldn't find it linked just within Google Trends. I actually had to, to Google it. So I, I don't know for sure why that is or if I just didn't see it. But up in the left, you can drag to select more squares to see at one time. And yes, we are seeing some foreign languages. So by default, it's now showing all regions. So down in the bottom left, you can actually change the region I'm just going to switch it over to the U.S., which, sorry, that's falling off the screen a little bit here. And now I can see what is trending in the U.S. 
in you know somewhat real time i i do know that there is a lag so i would say same thing within the last 24 hours what are people searching for and this is uh really interesting to watch evolve and it, it's kind of hard not to to gravitate towards this and of course you can you can add even more if you want to see it so um it's a really interesting tool if you haven't go check it out See if there are any great ways to use this with your students. I would definitely say this is more of a secondary tool, especially high school, but um, you may have some other ways to use it. And like I said, I'm not sure what's going on with the Google for Education way of turning it on, but I'm still working on that. And if anybody has solutions, please let me know. If you like this tip, please ring the bell and subscribe so that you get notified when new tips come out each week. And if you haven't already, hop on over to shakeuplearning.com and check out all the free resources we have there. Bye, y'all.